doing it again, We're getting carried away far too quickly. Yes, welcome to the Spurs of You, episode 53. It's been going on for over a year with arguably the best intro. Uh, we've got three stellar guests. Two of them were on the intro, one of them wasn't. We'll start with where we wasn't on the intro. Absolute disgrace, of course. How you doing, mate? Welcome. I don't make intros, I make finales. <laughs> oh, fair play. Give you that one. I'll give you that one. Fair play. You good? You well, though, mate? Yeah, I'm good, man. How you guys doing? Good, good. Uh, we've got Marlon along with us, who did make the intro. How you doing, mate? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad I made the intro. Especially after, yeah. you know, Alex is going to tell when I'm the worst one of the three of one on our show. So <laughs> I'm and glad you look like me. <laughs> of, course, of course, of course you like you. I mean, somehow we've got to ask the question, we've got to ask the question how Alex made it twice on there. Yeah. With some of his <laughs> atrocious opinions. We can't wait to delve into him. How you doing, Al? How you doing? Listen, yep. listen, listen. You have to have Mr. Box Office on your stream. You know what I mean? You know, you, you know, like I said in the strat line, if you don't know, get to know. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm in the mood today. I'm in the mood. I like it. To review this game that we saw on my, on, my, on, on Friday. Yeah. So Love let's get it. straight into it. You know what yeah. I mean? Big I up Marlon, big up Will, and um, let's get straight into it. There's going to be some. And big receipts. up Hershey, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and look, Alex. Alex, let's 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 start with you, my friend. Let's start with you. Look, it's a simple one. Forest nil, Tottenham two. Give me your evaluation of the game, my friend. And like, look, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly. Let me know. Tell me it all, mate. The floor is yours. Bang average. That's all I can say. Bang average. Um, I mean, like, yeah, first part of the first half, good. Looked good from what I saw. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it Forrest put their stall out straight away. I think we had a lot of a ball. You know, we did have a, you know, first chance early part. Um, I think we scored right at the end of the first half, I think it was. Yep. Kulu yeah, was yeah. a very good cross, but I think he does, he did the, he does, he's been, he's done the same thing that he's been doing for a long time when he's on the right. He cuts in. And then he, he makes a very good cross, got to say that, good cross. And Richarlison, easy chance. If he misses that chance, he's... A, he, I mean, I, I still call him the low average Emerald Heskey for a reason. And he's still in in, in that, in my in my opinion, still that, that striker as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then, really, it was kind of like, you know, what are Tottenham going to do to, you know, increase their lead? And Forrest really should have really got back into the game as far as I'm concerned. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, they scored. The goal was offside. Um, so that could have been the chance. Um, and then we uh, somehow um, 
the Forest keeper makes a really bad mistake. Yes, you can say that we pressed well and, um, you know, put pressure on them. Great. And really, it was the keeper fluffing his lines and uh, could have just taken his chance really well. But still, keeper should have saved that as well. So, and then it was just a chase of backs against the wall um, in the after the sending off from Basuma, which was a silly one, if you're really honest. And, yeah. you know, Vicario made some very good saves. You know, he's he's been good. Um, and overall, I think it was... It was a dogged performance, I would say, but still, on the face of it, bang average. You know what I mean? Then yeah, you, you know, yeah, if not in the voice, I did chances. That's, I think they would have. I think they would have. Before the show, the bad, right? you know, you <laughs> know, would have would have would have taken it. And look, I, I have to speak about. Uh, well, I think we'll leave it. I, I, I've got my things Ooh. to say on Kulu. I've got my we, things to it, say on Kulu. It's a point, Alex. We can wait on Kulu's Esky. I've got a point just for you. Look. Look, uh, Will, look, I'll come to you on this. Look, uh, some of what Alex says, I kind of understand. I think it wasn't it wasn't a blockbuster of a game. I thought it was we were lacking a bit of quality in the final third for patches of it. Um, we'll talk about the red card from Basuma uh, and a few of the other sort of things a bit later into the show. So, um, but look, it was three points. It's one of those games of football that I think we'll all agree on. We're probably not going to look back at the end of the season and go, oh, that's the one to go and look back on for the highlights because it wasn't exciting. Forest weren't a very good side. I think let's be fair with it. Uh, the keeper makes a horrible um, mistake for Kulu's goal. But look, I, I can't say I disagree. We'll talk about Kulu separately after this as well. But I thought Kulu was our best player on the pitch. But, um, but yeah, there wasn't a um, load of outstanding performances on the pitch yeah no i mean the game was you know f- fairly accurate to what you know alex said i mean was, the whole the first half was was was, was dodgy we had a, it seemed like they they had nerves in them for some reason you know five and six yard passes had a hard time connecting um you know, Forrest, to me, didn't look like they were ever going to actually score a goal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. They, they may have tried a couple of times, <laughs> but they're so bad in front of goal. There's not, it wasn't even, but they have like one shot on target in the entire game or something like that. Like, I mean. Wasn't that wasn't that shot on target, by the way, like a bit of a special measure to that Vicario save, which was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They may have more than that. I don't even remember. I'd have to look, but. Uh, yeah. The head was, in it, yeah. It's too long ago. They had, yeah, yeah, one shot on target. That was it. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it was a, it was kind of a, a dodgy. Like it, it was probably the jammiest win that I think we've had all season, in my opinion. Um, I mean, really, it, was, uh, it was really. You thought that was our worst performance where we won the game? Yeah, yeah. Even worse than Luton. So I thought we were yeah because in the, the first half against Luton yeah. we dominated right Luton we dominated we dominated that yeah game I can't the first half, the first half was get, absolutely get, like one sided altogether and whereas mm-hmm. with this one it seemed just seemed sketchy the whole the whole ninety minutes just seemed jammy to me right like we could we never really seemed to get a even though we dominated possession the possession we had seemed like it was. It was forced. It was stuck together. We're having to recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I agree. I get your point. It wasn't complete. Like that first half against Luton was fluid. I mean, it was boom, 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 boom. Yeah. When we were tearing them apart, should have been five, six nil up. You know. Yeah. No. Okay. 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 I, I, I meant to me on that one. Against Forest, it didn't feel like that. Like we, we, you know, for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. I agree. Look. Look. I'll Marlon. Look. I'll come to you. I think. Um, we'll make some good points. I thought. Wasn't it? Well, as I said, it wasn't a blockbuster. It wasn't again one that you go back to. You take the three points though. Three points is a, is a result, whether you like it or not. Um, but is uh, was there any concerns for you in the game as well? I want to sort of go but go down this sort of alley for a second because for me, I there was some concerns for me because I thought we won the game two 0 comfortably, but. We allowed this Forest team to have chance after chance whilst doing really nothing with the ball, right? If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look at the end of the day, look, with the team that we have at, right at now, it's not our best 11. It's not, never going to be, right? Yeah, so yeah. I look I, I look at it and go, this is kind of what I'm kind of expecting, 
right? The problem I the problem that I've had in the last couple of weeks is when we are playing bad, right? Because a lot of the time we've been playing well and just the teams have just luckily scored. Like you take the West Ham game and like that. But this time, this was the first time all season that I could say we played terrible and we actually got three points. And that was always my worry under Ange. That could yeah. we do? Could we do that? And fr- mm-hmm. Friday just proved that we could. So I'm not, ma- I'm not, I'm not mad at it because at the end of the day, we're gonna get teams like Nottingham Forest that we're gonna come up against, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be we're gonna have to get out these performances. And as long as we can get the three points, then that's kind of all that matters because we know we're not gonna play like that in other games. We haven't really seen. It's been apart from Wolves. Probably in parts against Fulham, and like you said, second the second half against Luton is completely different because we had ten men already. It's I'm I'm I just have I'd have to take the positive from this and go. We have got three points considering it wasn't nothing like Angel. It wasn't pretty, and as Will said, it was it felt forced. Um, and there was parts of the game where you're kind of looking at it. We were on edge, but Vicario makes a great save. But Forrest didn't never look like they were gonna score. Yeah. And we, and that and that's and that's the key thing here, right? We can just go away from it, go great three points, move on. <laughs> no, 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 definitely don't totally get it. look. I've got two questions I want to ask, and they're gonna be back to back. I'm gonna go with this one first. I'm gonna move on because I want to give Alex his his five minutes of fame, as he likes to call it. And the, the next question, guys, is was Kulazeski man of the match? Alex, I for one think he was. But Alex, you have an opinion that he wasn't. Oh, the floor is yours, my friend. You're muted. I thought it was better against Man City, if I'm really honest. I don't. I, 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 I don't think. I don't. I don't think. The games, in the sense of this game, though, was he the best player on the pitch against Forest? I would have gave it to Davis, if I'm really honest with you. No, I think Davis is a fair shot. Because Davis I, I, I'll shout. be I honest with you, I don't think Kulu did anything different than he's done before. Since hey, he well, got into that, well, the thing, thing is, though, crossed it. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, well yeah, but that, the, but the, really, to honest you, what what do you expect from your winger? I'm not being funny, yeah. And like, I, like, I, like I said, I've said it how many times? This guy cannot play on the wing. Yeah, the thing that was the thing that was amazing about the game when he was on the right. I don't know what, what Forrest were doing when they did their research on this guy. You know what to do with uh, Kulu. When he, 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 you know what to do with him, yeah, when he's on the right, yeah? You know, he always cuts in. So you know what to, where to stop him and that's it. Forrest kept on letting him do it every single time. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, I, I will say this. At the beginning of the first half, when he was in the middle, I started to see a little bit good. He was, he was good. He made a good through pass onto Song and that was it. But then when Johnson came off, he had to go on back on that right. And he's like Hoybier. He does a job. Sorry, he just like the the second goal. I mean, the the goal, yeah, it was a mistake from the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper should have saved the goal, should have saved his shot. You know what I mean? Yes, the cross was good, but you know, I I, I just don't I mean I've heard people saying he's unplay he's been unplayable. Please, if that's unplayable, what is good now these days? Now, what is unplayable these days? Yeah, I don't think he was that great. I don't think I, I think it was. I think it was good. Yeah, the things that I've heard about him, I think it was just way over the top. You know what I mean? And I think he was much better against Aston Villa and Man City. I think it was a better. better I thought. Better it, I thought he was because I thought, I thought, I thought he was you, you heard me Newcastle after Man City. He looked like Dembele. Yeah, I think the, I think the centre midfield is more for him, and he's even admitted it himself. So that for me, I think, no, I think, I think, no, no, I, think no, I think, no I think the key, but Alex, I think the key bit for me. Look, I'll move to you, Marlon, and ask you on this one. Like, I think we'll move in the sense of, I kind of get half of what Alex is saying. For me, I think Kulu is much more beneficial to Tottenham when he's down the middle. I think, yep. in the sense of what Alex is saying, is right that I think on the wing he does get lost in games for me. Mm-hmm. But what I will say against what Alex said is I thought he actually had a very, very good game when he moved out there. He did a job. I think the cross in, by the way, for Richarlison was pinpoint perfect. Mm-hmm. You can't really argue on that one. And, and Alex was right. You can't, Richarlison can't miss that. It's an absolute sitter. And his goal is dogging. Richarlison could work. miss. <laughs> he could have missed that. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, 
I can't say anything bad at the moment. He scored three and two at the moment. So yeah, I've got to, I've got I've got I've got to say I've, you've got to utilize it before it yeah. and stuff. But in the sense of what my point is, is then then the goal, like listen, I think Alex is getting right. I think the goalkeeper makes an absolute howler of it, but he still scores a goal, right? So I think we have in fair fair balance of it all. Um was he the best player? It wasn't a brilliant performance from him, by the way. I think he was the best of a bad bunch. I think, as I said, no one was really exceptional yes, uh, against... It's effective, um, Perchy. I think it's effective. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think that's a way That's the way to look at it. But then you're hearing people like Gary Neville saying, a £100 million player in a couple of years' time from that performance. Really? You know what I mean? So I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it just, just, just those sort of things I heard. You know what I mean? I was coming back from where no, I was think, coming think, out from, and that's I what think, I was I hearing. Think, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. I understand kind of what you're going at, but for me, I think we've got to be fair in the balance of it. That actually, I thought he was, I thought he was our best player. Um, I think I get, you, know, you make a shout that Ben Davis is a shout in there. I think Romero, you could put an argument into the conversation as well that we had a good game. Vicario didn't do much, but when needed, he was good. But wouldn't put him as man of the match. But look, Marlon, what about your assessment of it? As an old standby by saying Kuzeski was probably the best player for us against uh, Forest. Again, I always caveat best of the bad bunches. I don't think we were amazing. But yeah, no, look, at the end of the day, Kulu did two things in the game that got us the three points. And that's how that's how everyone's looking at it. He's if it wasn't for his bit of quality, right? And let's be honest, it was two bits of well. Apart from the court, yeah, he's still what he's done for the second goal, he still has to do something with it, right? Yeah, and yeah, no, that's what I mean. You've yeah, got, and you've we, got haven't, we haven't seen, we haven't really, really seen Cooley do that on the wing for most of the season. Yeah, Usually, yeah. It, it, when he does create the assist, someone's always missed it, or it's not. It, look, at the end of the day, he's had the most chances created for, I think, in the Spurs, one of the most chances created, but he hasn't, he had hardly had any assists. So for me. Kulu got the man of the match, and it's it's always going to go to an attacking player in a game like that when the piece, the quality that was produced for those goals was down to him and nobody else, right? It was literally that's what won us the game, right? That that first goal, if it doesn't go in, I don't think the second goal happens, and I think it probably ends up being nil nil. But we just needed that bit of quality at the right time. Harry Kane used to do it a lot, just do it a lot, be out of the game, produces one bit of quality, and next thing you know back of the net so we just have to take it with a pinch so I get what Alex is saying I get it and I think he has looked better as a number 10 he was a number 10 at Juventus most of the time as well so it kind of goes with the territory but for me you if you're looking at like, when you bring up statistics and stuff with football you have to look at the two bits that Cooley done in the game and it's won the game and you, that's why he's got the man of the match without yeah. it it's it's a totally different story yes Ben Davis was good yes Romero was good I thought Poro was okay and your doggy was actually the back four back as a back five. They did okay. They kept a clean sheet at the end of the day, right? So you have to give them credit where credit's due. And but the rest of the team, it, it was like you have to go back to Will's point. It felt forced. <laughs> so and that's and that's a really great analogy of it because that's what we have to look at. And that's why Kulu and you, the attacking player is always going to get it, no matter what situation you're in. In that situation on Friday, it was such a crap game. Kulu's always going to get man of the match, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that, that's, that's, that, I get it. And look, look, I'll move to you, Will, but before I do, guys, we've got 33 likes and over 115 of you in here. Come on. If you thought Kulizeski was man of the match, smash the like button. If you didn't, then you didn't think he was the best player on the pitch. Sort yourselves <laughs> out. Have a word with yourselves. Come on. Get over 100 gotta, likes. Let's get that done. Before we move on, um, though, just quickly on Kulizeski. <laughs> you got to give him credit for it. Like, as long as, as much as I've been frustrated with him assisting goals this season, because I think that's the part for me that I think he's been that he's been struggling with. Um, he did he did that day, right? He he got a he he got an assist, and that's what I expect from him. And I mean, look, as much as we want to crap on him this season for you know wasting opportunities, which he has done, that's I think that's a justified criticism of him. Um, he's got what two more open play goals than even like Bakai Saka does, right? He's on the same mm-hmm. amount of goals as Saka, but and two of those were pens for Saka. So, you know, I mean. Can we no, really complain? No. Like, if he doubles what he's done this first half of the season, he's going to end up with 10 goals. And, I mean, that, that's all I can really expect from, from wide players is, is to get 10 plus a season. So, Well, no, I think, well, you've touched on a good point here, and I think that's a very, very good point. You're gonna, you, he's going to probably end up with about 10 or so, ten or 12 goals this season, what you probably expect from a winger. 
I think the one thing for me is, is I was very, very critical of him out wide because he never put crosses in the box. So I can't then be critical when he does go and put a ball in the box and we score from it, right? So, and then he scores a goal from out wide. So we have to be, for me, I have to be balanced with it. And I said, look, I would say the second goal was very uh, fortuitous to a certain degree. He gets the ball thrown to him, but it doesn't really matter. You still got to go and score, right? I think that's the fair, fair, fair um, uh, analysis to it, really. Um, so I, I think he was. I thought he was. I thought he was. I thought he was the best player for us. Um, so I think we can only sort of judge it really on that, right? Um, I want to move on to another little topic, guys. Because it's a topic that's really divided now, and I, I don't know how where we're where we're going to go with it, but it's going to be quite interesting. Basuma and Adogi are suspended uh, for the Everton game, of course. Have we got a discipline issue at Tottenham? Uh, Will, look, I'll start with you. Um, I'll start with you on this one because we're bottom of the charts for disciplinary record and the disciplinary records in the league. We're we're rock bottom with the worst. Um, and by a by distance as well. We've already seen four red cards already this season. Two of them have been straight reds. Two of them have been two yellow cards uh, to be a red card. Is this something that needs to happen? And who needs to fix this problem? Because I always sit there and I always use the analogy here is, it's great, we like to see passion and stuff, but we're losing players. I, it means the more times we see players get suspended... We then end up having to see Dross players fill in like the likes of Eric Dyer, Emerson Royals, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So have we has something got to change with that? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the yellow cards came at the beginning of the season when uh they were handing them out like candy cakes for dissent, right? Like that's where a lot yeah, of those yeah. came from. Um, but recently it hasn't been for that. And I mean the one on Basuma was it was a red card all day. Yes. Um, the, I, I will also caveat the the foul the booking for a doggy was an absolute disgrace. It was never have been a yellow. yellow card. It it's have never been, a yellow card. It's not even a foul, right? I mean, sh shoulder yeah. shoulder challenges aren't a foul. You're allowed to shoulder check a guy off the ball, right? I I don't understand why why that was even blown, much less given as a yellow card. Um, and Yates should have been like... booked <laughs> as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, like, Yates, Yates should have been booked because this is where the referee didn't say he asked for your doggy to be booked. Yeah, didn't book him, and you're not allowed to. Ask. This, this is the thing, though. Like, I, I hear all the I, Marlon, I hear all this a lot, and like, I get it by the way. I understand, I understand this sentiment in that sense, but for me, I look at it more on Tottenham side, right? Like, I, I'll be honest, I don't get I don't care about Forrest's players in the, in the grand scheme of it, like, because that doesn't affect me down the line, but for me, I agree. Uh, a doggy should be booked, but I also look at it, the four other ones, he did get booked on, rightly so. So it, it, it is a combination of it all. And I get I get the sentiment in what you're saying, but I just sit back going, do we, as Spur, uh, look, have to look at us and go, we need to be much more savvy when we're on the pitch? I, d I don't know the answer. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just spitballing you, know, you guys. You know, you, know, you know what, right? So I, I had this conversation on friday as well and i think it's not got nothing to do with our disciplinary i think it's the way we play and i think that's the issue now if you if you look at most of the bookings we are picking up especially basuma's ones because we're taking these risks what ends up happening is we make mistakes right so you doggy you doggy and basuma is probably a prime example right where they lose the ball or the ball gets taken off them what's the first thing in their head before when it gets turned over is to either get that pull the player back or do something so it, it you know so it doesn't go clean through and stuff like that. So I think a lot of it, and that's where you kind of have to look at the whole way of it, the way it's being played at the moment. And I'd love to see how many of them bookings we've got because we've lost the ball first. Because I don't think it's down mm -hmm. to us actually make it go, you know, the team has the ball and we make a tackle, right? Forget Basuma's red card because that's disgraceful. Right, but if you look at most of the bookings that we do get, Poro and all of them, even down to Romero, it's down to because we're trying to be very risky and trying to be on the front foot. And we and you can see it, Basuma's play's kind of stopped in the last weeks where he's not taken as much risk. But you saw against Man City where he tried to. But and I think that's more down to where we're catching these bookings because the players are making mistakes when they are trying to push forward um and trying to, you know, try and they're just trying different things. And they are, and that's what and that's what 
probably what more the issue is more down to this it's not disciplinary i don't because there's not been a game this year where you look at us and go we've been dirty there's, there's not apart from oh, chelsea, I don't know. Oh, I chelsea, don't know. chelsea 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 oh. i'll take out of it right but the rest of them i wouldn't say that we we've been overzealous them. romero obviously gets a lot of flack right for some of these tackles but the rest of them i, I can't see it I, i'm not sat there and going oh Basuma. I think Basuma's. I think Basuma's been on the I, level of, of reckless in times. Yeah, but I, I, what, I love like Basuma. By no, the way, but this, but is what, this is what I'm saying about. If you just go and watch most of Basuma's yellow cards, it's down to where he's tried to nutmeg someone. He's tried to do this, he's tried, and then he's lost the ball, and then he has to make a tackle or pull them back before they go on the break. And I think that's where it comes from. The red card, I can't get away from that tackle. It was, it was just a poor tackle, right? But if you go and look at some of the others that he's done. I think you'll find that he's most of the time it's because he's lost the ball first. So okay, I, okay, so yeah. look, I get that, but my but point his last here is off was because he was he dove, right? Yeah, he dive. yeah, he dived, yeah. But did you see the book? His booking before in that game was down to where he'd lost the ball and pulled the player back. He does yeah, it all the time. I get all that, and all of those things add up. And the point what I'm trying to make is though, is right now whether we like it or not, we're not in a position to have players suspended all the time. We haven't got the squad for it, right? And this is this is where I always said it, and I say it's a lot of the times like when we, we need to be much more savvy when we're playing, like a bit more clever. Like I look at other teams and I go, people go, oh well, that shouldn't be. But it, sometimes a lot of the players are doing it very clever. I feel like we do it very much in the face of everyone. And then I hear a lot of this notion that oh well, there's a bias against Tottenham. They want us. No, I don't think there is. I think we're just. We're just making more, we're just making errors that are blatant at the moment. From my opinion, this is just literally my opinion, but oh, it worries me because as I said, if we've now we're now at a situation where if Romero and Saar get booked against Everton, they then miss Brighton. And it, it the problem is is it's a spiral, right? Look, Alex, I'll bring you into it, mate. For me, the problem is, is it's all like continuity, right? about the, the same team playing as much as possible. I know we've got injuries. You can't help injuries, but you can help suspensions, right? Yeah, yeah, you can. I don't think we are dirty, to be honest with you. Um, I just think that we're just we're making errors um, with our passing. I think if we don't, I, don't, I think at the end of the day, it just, I think it just shows that, because the thing I don't really like about what I hear from Tottenham fans is that when we get our first eleven this is going to happen. And I say, well, I don't like hearing that because, you know, you don't win it on the first 11, you win it on the squad. So these suspensions are always going to happen. You know what I mean? So, because you know the rules now with the referee and VAR now, these things unfortunately will happen regardless whether you, you, you know, you want it to or not. So for me, I, I don't think, I don't think it's about us being dirty. I don't think you can, you know, um, take out that that aggressive side because I think that's what the whole point of Ange Ball is. You know what I mean? You've got to have a little bit more about you. You know what I mean? To like, be more aggressive to go forward a little bit. So I don't think you can. I don't think. I think it's more about errors. I think. I think with the thing with Pasuma is errors. You know what I mean? I think with Romero errors. You know what I mean? I don't think he's a dirty player. That's why I don't rate him. I don't rate him as highly as other, other Tottenham fans do and, and what Will does. I, I think, like I said, I think there's still a lot to his game that needs to be improved and that's it as far as I'm concerned, you know? Um, so I don't really agree that we have to sort out... I think I don't really agree with the whole thing that we're a dirty team. No, I don't agree with it at all. I think the reason why we're saying this at the moment is because of the squad. Um, hmm. But again, this is why I said this season is a build. Exactly why this is a build. And the people that are saying it right now, that we're a dirty team, we're worried about the injuries, are because their expectations went up after those first 10 games. Yeah? And now, look at the squad now. We're all now saying, and I keep on hearing from Tottenham fans, oh, when our players come back, when Van der Ven comes back, oh, when Manderson comes back, you get what I'm saying? Yeah? So... I don't think we're just to answer your question. We're not a dirty team. I don't think we're a dirty team. I think it's down to errors, and that's it. That's that's my opinion. Percy, quickly, right? Because I just had a look at the last five games, right? In each one of those games, apart from City, the other team has committed more fouls than us. But yet, we're looking. We're saying we've got a discipline problem. It may be that the referees are just looking at our fouls, going, 
they're more bookable offenses, right? Manchester City, it was even. So if we were that much of a dirty team, we'd be seeing a lot more fouls, right? We'd be seeing a lot more challenges being committed. I, I just think it's down to, I think it's a lot of it is just down to the way we play. And it is down to mistakes. Mute, coach, it's down, it's down to the fact that, like, for example, I think they had, what, one card or two cards maybe? Yeah. And, the, and they should have had at least four or five easy. Yeah, and they've committed way, way just, more fouls than we're us. Not, yeah. We're not, we are getting a little bit of the short end of the stick when it comes to, yeah. like, there's that first half was completely one-sided on, on the referee's part as far as its bookings were concerned. They were a far more physical team like that that whole incident where you had two players basically just kicking the crap out of sun it, it looked like a beat down for in and out in a back alley and they didn't even get called for a foul i mean knee to the head kicking him stepping on him it's got nothing out of that, out of that yeah no, like, it's, like, like I, I get it like i kind of i, I don't by the way, i don't know the answer i'm, I'm literally just <laughs> because i don't i don't actually know but but the question i will always ask is it can't keep happening. It's not sustainable, right? Like we losing players injury wise, like that happens. You just got to get over that. But you can get, you could avoid getting bookings and suspended suspensions, right? I think that for me is the key bit. Is this something that the manager has to sort out, or is this something that the likes of Son, Romero, Madison behind them, as captains and leaders have to take ownership on? Like, is this a manager that needs to go in and say, guys? I can't keep having you suspended because we've got games coming up thick and fast. Basuma's now going to think it works out. It's going to miss seven games because you include the AFCON straight after. So he's not going to be available now until February. Like, I don't think he'll miss three games for the AFCON. His country doesn't go very far in that competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, obviously, that, that was obviously taken into account if they get to the final. They're probably not going to. But yeah, they, but they the most point likely is, won't even make it out of the group. So. You, we hope, right? <laughs> no, no, we no. Hope. They're, both, they're both get out. They're both get out. But, but obviously, look, we, we we'll talk we'll talk about the likes of Afcon and and the Asia Cup. Sun's going, Sars going, Basuma's going, right? But we also don't have Madison, Van der Ven, Benton Core. Lo Celso's injured now. We don't know when he's going to be back. Hopefully, he'll be back on the weekend. Brendan Johnson, we don't know if he's going to be available on the weekend. Not 100% sure on that. I mean, Perisic, after the Solomon, game, it was just a head, head cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm only so just saying it because in the content, we don't know 100% know he's going to be available, but I expect him probably to. But this is the worry for me. We've got a load of injuries. We can't keep having players suspended. We're going to have three going away on international duty. And that, for me, is where I get worried because then it is going to be the likes of Less and lesser quality players are going to have to start playing, right? But, but Perchi, is it not? Are we not? Having, are we not just talking about the same three players here, which is Basuma, Yudogi, and Romero? Obviously, he's one yellow card away. They're the Saar, only ones get Saar's right? one booking away. Yeah, well, Saar and and Saar. So you're talking two midfielders, a yeah. defender, one yellow, and, and a fullback. So they're in positions where they're kind of. It's probably, and I, I think it's going to be down to. I think a lot of it is down to unless we change the way we play. I think they're always going. I think we're always going to pick up bookings in those positions, um, and that's why I just probably come out and said already that he wants another defender because he he wants Romero to take the risks. He wants Van der Ven to take the risks, right? Because we don't know. Look, if Van der Ven was still around, would he be coming up to suspension as well? He should. He had way, he had more yells than Romero yeah, did. He then, probably yeah, would have so, already been suspended for a game. Yeah. I know. So you you've got to look at it like that. Is is it is it down to this high line that we're playing and actually? If that's why um, Ange wants proper backup in those positions, right? Agreed. We and we need that anyway, right? Yeah. So that's why he said, I need one more. Because he, I, I think he's going to use Van der Ven as a left back as well. Because I, I'll be honest, I don't want to see Ben Davis at left back against Everton. I really don't. He can't go left back. He's I'd not, rather he's not, Royal. He's not, he's not no, we won't be Ben Davis. He'll be Emerson Royal at left back. You, well, you, you hope. <laughs> you just don't know. You don't we, know what we will be. What, who, else, who else would it be? Just, he hasn't got the pace for it, bro. He hasn't got I know, the pace for it. It, it, hey. depends, it depends what happens in the week. We don't know. I'm just saying, right? Because a lot of people are going, oh, Ben Davis is going to be a back at left back. He might not be. You know, Dyer is still around. It could be anybody, right? So really? you're hoping. The only, the only other way it works is then if he moves Romero to the left side of centre half and put Roy out mm -hmm. at centre half. It's like, which is worse? I don't yeah. know. This is the problem. This, yeah, this is the issue we've got at the moment. I get it. Mm. But 
yeah, unless he changes the way we play, I think we're always going to be picking up picking up these bookings. I just yeah, it's yeah. not going to change. Um, and especially with the way, because what clubs are now doing as well, they're watching the way we play. They've watched the Villa game. They've watched West Ham. They're going to sit and try and catch us, right? And that's yeah. and, and this is what's going to happen the longer we go on. But yeah, will we get smarter about it? Probably. We'll probably get. We'll probably stop because at the end of the day, we're still just into Angel, right? As as we call it. So it's gonna be. It's gonna take time. So there's gonna be a point where the players know where to be. They're not gonna get caught out. They're not gonna make the mistakes. And I think that's all it's down to. A discipline problem. I don't think we have. I just think it's a case of change. If you, yeah, it's just, it's just a case of the way we play. And that and that's the way. I, I can't see anything, anything more than that. What yeah, no, listen. Perchie? Go on, show go, go, go. What right. did I say to you, Perchie, all that time, yeah? You know that Fulham game everyone was having a go at him for, yeah? Right? And I think he'll do the same thing in the FA Cup, by the way. Right? Oh, yeah, he'll play a second team. <laughs> yeah? I think he'll play a second team, yeah? Right? What did I say to you, yeah? Right? And I, I, I looked at it and assisted it. He played the second team, and look how many players are playing in the team right now from that, from that Fulham game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he knows. Wait, wait, he got, he knows. Wait, 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 hang on. Let's just wait. Well, we got rid of, he got rid of Dave, uh, not Dave, sorry, Sanchez. Yeah, he got rid of who else? He had was Davis there, didn't he? He had Hoybier there. He had Davis he? in. Davis is now part of his team. Hoybier. He had Dyer in there. Dyer is yeah. probably not part of his team. Yeah, uh, Hoybier is probably not going to be part of his team yeah, long the term. Also there, who's been playing in the game? Well. So yeah. You know what I, mean? uh, I just, I just think it, it it's all. I, I think it's all context, right? I think that's the key bit, right? But listen, I, I get it. Listen, the suspensions and stuff are going to happen, right? It is what it is. But it's never going to change. It's not going to change because the thing is, though, it's the way he plays, and you, you know, you know how I feel about the manager. Yeah, you know that my my thoughts has not changed. It's got even further. I've, I even hate him even more now after the idiot said what he said to me. Yeah. Right, so you know what I mean. So you know, like you know, I, I'm back. I'm set. I'm defending him when I even, don't even like Costa Coglu. Yeah, oh, here we go. you know what I mean. I'm like being honest. You, you, know, you, know, you, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So I'm saying, I'm seeing exactly what he's no, talking about. I'm not, no joke here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I know you're not joking. Here. That's what I think but, terrifies most. Of but us. but it's just the point is the point I'm making is is that. You can see exactly what he's doing. You see what I'm saying? And I don't think it's going to change. I think we're going to always have this problem. I think he knows this. That's why we need a squad that understands how to play Ange Ball. You don't need world-class players because you don't need world-class players in the team. You know what I mean? You don't need world-class players in this team. You know, you don't need world-class players to win a championship, let alone let alone getting into top four. So I just think at the moment, you need players that can work in, in Angie's system at the moment. And that's why he wants defenders or midfielders that can do that at the moment. He hasn't got that at the moment. But he's willing to work with players that are willing to work in his system at the moment because he knows he's going to get suspensions. He knows he's going to lose players for injury because you've got to go full throttle. Because if you're not going full throttle, you end up like Pesuma playing within himself and you're sitting there looking at him thinking, he ain't playing well at the moment, isn't he? You know what I mean? So yeah, listen, I think, I think, I think, Basuma, I think Basuma plays better when he's alongside Papa Saar. I feel like yeah, quality-wise, I think he's a lot. He's better when he plays alongside Saar. Um, look, I want to slightly move on to a bit because we talk about players that aren't going to be available. Players that are potentially going to be available very, very soon are Mickey van der Ven and James Madison are nearly back. Well, we, we read a lot now that they are going to be uh, they're 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 doing uh, training now on the pitch now, so they're back on the pitch, trying to get some match fitness. How important is it having these two players back? I heard I read somewhere where Paul O'Keefe said that potentially the Burnley Cup game, Van der Ven will be available, and Madison not too long after that. Look, Marlon, I'll come to you. I'll start off with you. Look. I think these two lads are very, very crucial in our team at the moment, in the way that we play. I think the quicker they come back, the better. How excited and how hopeful are you that these lads come back quickly? For me, more importantly, uh, it's Van der Ven for me. Um, I think the back four 
is better. Like, and don't get me wrong, Ben Davis played well on Friday. He's, a, he's played well, yeah, he's yeah. Played, and he's done really well when he's come in. But actually, as a unit, them four are what I think is more key. I think we do have enough quality at the top of the pitch when they used um, to get through games. I know Madison's been brilliant, don't get me wrong, right? But I think Van der Ven was the bigger miss um, defence. Well, in the last few games as well, I think he's been a bigger miss than what Madison... Because we still score goals. We've still, you know, at the end of the day, the stat is we scored in every game this season. So at the end of the day, going forward hasn't been our major issue. It's been defending. Since, since Van der Ven's been out, it's been defending. So... I go, I go with the fact is I can't wait till Van der Ben gets back. For me, right, I'm still, I still got Conte in my head. I have to say it. Defend from the defend. I, I'd rather keep clean sheets than actually scoring goals. So I'm, a, I'm on one of them. <laughs> so that's why I think oh, Van der Ben. Yeah. We've scored yeah. in every game since yeah. March of 2023, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, we're actually on like. Like Brighton's run of 32 games, I think, with scoring has just ended today because they didn't score against Arsenal. And ours mm. is the next one that's like right behind, right behind there. Yeah. So. No, listen, I think, I think I have you right, Marlon. I, listen, I think when we talk about clean sheets, I think it goes in both ways, right? Like, I think, I think we needed a clean sheet against Forest. I felt like it felt like it was going a bit too far, but I think we have to really be fair about it. Like, if you're winning 6 1, it's better than winning 2 0. Right in in the grand scheme of things, it's better, right? I get your I get your point, but, <laughs> but, no, but that, that, that last goal, goal against Newcastle, it was so disappointed that we conceded. Like yeah, literally. yeah, no, no, but and then we that's were falling up. I and I, I, I and I get look, I look, I, I love it. Look, I love Andrew. Everything he does, I'm not like Alex, but I just look at it and go. I always want the defense to be the unit, and always want to be able to keep clean sheets, and it helps Vicario as well. He's he, even though he played really great on Friday, I just. I've, I've just thought, if you look since Van der Ben's been injured, we've literally conceded literally two, apart from the last two games in every game. And it's been, but it's down to errors, down to mistakes and stuff like that. But those yeah, weren't really that, happening the weeks before. Even that goal we conceded to Palace was a dodgy one there. Yeah. Time, right? Like it was not necessary at all to concede. It was just, yeah. yeah. And, I, and that's why I just want to see the unit back because as a four, I think they're great. And I think they're more key. Where I think when... Look, let's be honest. Um, when Bentacol was in that midfield against Villa, he looked like, and him and Lacelso and Kulu, Kulu, Kulu. I think a lot we've seen in the last couple of games, Kulu can play the number ten, right? So we're kind of looking at going. If Madis Madison's injury record's not, he always go does. He always does this. There's two parts in the season where he just goes, he gets injured, right? So it means that Kulu can play the number ten role and be vital to what we need. So yeah, I'm glad Madison's back. Don't get me wrong, but what does that mean for Kulu? Does he just go back out onto the right where he, a lot of us have been critical of him this season? So I'm, that's why I'm more excited about Van der Ven than Madison. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. Um, look, Alex, I'll come, I'll come to you quickly on this one. But for me, I'm on the opposite. I think we, I think James Madison coming back is going to be a revelation. I thought he was our best player before he got injured. Um. But Van der Ven's close up there, by the way. I love Mickey Van der Ven. I think he's a brilliant player as well. Just what about you? I mean, best player how... in the league when he got injured. Who? Madison was the best player in the league when he got injured. Yeah, that's what I mean. He was he, Madison was outstanding, right? And so look, Alex, are you hopeful that these lads are gonna be back within a month? Or are you worried that we're gonna be rushing them back? Or what about your thoughts on these two guys? I think we're rushing them back too too, too soon. I think we are. I think that's just the MO with Tottenham. I've got to be honest. I think why they've already been out longer than than was. They've necessary. been out for a while. Remember, they've been out well, for well, two well, I, I, That's that, that's my hunch at the moment. I think I think you're rushing. I I, I just got that feeling that I think they're going to be rushing them too quickly because I mean, the news. Why do we I, need I don't to think know? We're rushing them at all, right? So like Vanderven, the on a grade two hamstring, it's it's three to eight weeks. Well, I mean, regardless, I mean, I'm not going to get into medical, Will, because I mean, I'm not a medical person. But the point I'm making is, is that what, why does, why do we need to have the news anyway in the first place? Let, let them, let them sort themselves out anyway. You know what I mean? And also, I think as well, for me, for me, if you're a top team, you know, um, you, 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 your backups, you know, try and make yourself, make themselves known. This is, this is where we have a problem. This is where we have the problem is that, you're letting these these players that are injured become so important that when they come back, 
they might come back and they'll not be that might be absolute rubbish. But because the because the back yeah, backups haven't that been about that Benzo great. Yeah, we thought that come back and it was brilliant. Well, no, but yeah, but, but will look, look, look what happened? Look what happened though, will. Look what happened, Will. He got injured straight away after, afterwards, didn't Completely he? Completely different injury. But that was a foul. That was a bad tackle. Yeah, right? but the, 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 point, the point I'm making is... the point I'm totally making different is, injury, man. got injured. It was his ankle. But right. we're doing it again. Yeah. We're doing it again, though, guys. We're doing it again. We're doing, you know what are we doing saying it again? That we don't have a squad. We don't have a squad, yeah? All right? We're What's saying that, that we haven't got a good squad. They're, they're part of our squad. No, no, I'm asking the question, but you, 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 you're you turning my question into something more bigger now no. because you're, because you're, 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 you're bustling me now. When you actually look at the details of what you're saying, it's an empty No, no, because you know, no, no, don't, don't twist my words now, Will. I'm saying the point I is... Didn't twist any of your no, you didn't twist <laughs> my words because you're saying to me now, right? That you're waffling, that, Like yes, I said before. I'm saying to you now. No, 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 because you're not listening to what I'm saying. Like I said to you, my, my initial response was... Yeah, is that we are? I think we are rushing these two back. Yeah, because of the fact that why do we need to know about the news about he's playing on grass? We're doing this. He's doing this. He's doing this. He's doing this. For me, you don't need to know about that. Just let him recover. Yeah, especially Van der Ven. Yeah, when he's got but an injury. What if they have recovered, Alex? Well, we don't know yet. Until recovered? they start playing, you don't know, don't you? Neither do you by saying we're rushing about. Well, well I don't do know, don't I? But the thing is, I don't, I'm not really that bothered about them right now because at the end of the day, they need to recover. Yeah? Until they come on the pitch and we see them on the pitch, as they come on the pitch, right, we'll see what happens. But for me, this is where the problem is with Tottenham Hotspur and wh where we go at, at the end of the day, right? Why can't we just just focus on the players we've got right now, yeah? And this is where January and the summer is important at the end of the day because we need to stop having these conversations about players that are injured, yeah? I don't hear this for Newcastle right now. I don't hear this for Arsenal right uh, now. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop, uh, Alex, I'm going to stop you on the Newcastle bit. I was on a Newcastle thing just before the Friday game. And yes, they are. They're talking about all oh, Botman coming back. They can't wait for um Botman is back worry now, about Nick Pope. Yeah, yeah. Nick Pope, um, Dan Burn. They were talking about all of them. They literally were talk talking about their injuries because that was the biggest problem. They were so happy that um, Wilson and Longstaff were on the bench against Brighton us. streams are doing the yeah. exact same thing. Yeah, Alex. Well, yeah. well okay, that's fans then. But the <laughs> thing is though, at the end of the day, right? I, I'm, I'm sticking to what I say because I know as Arsenal Tottenham fans, always, I've heard Arsenal this all before. What are you saying? I've heard timber. this all before. If we Will. had timber, if we had timber, if yeah. we had timber. Oh yeah, but Will, 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 you get triggered. You get, you get, you you you, you twerk for Arsenal fans, but we all know that already, bro. You all for twerk anyone. for Arsenal fans. <laughs> Arsenal fans, bro. I, I know what you, Arsenal Alex. fans are like, bruv. You know what I mean? So let, let's not go there. You know what I mean? Alex, I don't need to do that because I know chat. where my team is. Super you know what I mean? Five, hence five why, hence why right I, I know exactly <laughs> what, why I don't twerk for our, 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 our first team saying, oh, our first 11 on the pitch, we're going to get top four. We're going to get championships. You know what I mean? This is the point I'm making. It's like the problem I have with um, um, us saying and um, putting this news out is like when Van der Ven comes in, we're going to think, oh, he's going to come straight in and he's going to do this and do that and do this. Well, for me, at the moment, he needs to just get on the pitch first and start, and then start playing, getting his match fitness up. You know what I mean? And with an injury that he's had already, a speed merchant like he is, that is that is not a good injury to have, a hamstring injury. You know what I mean? To recover from, you know what I mean? So that's where I'm like, mm, I don't know at the moment. Madison, he's got history of injuries. You know what I mean? So putting pressure on that, that guy to come in and then boom, hit the ground running again. Should you don't know, it. don't you? <laughs> this is the problem I have it. with it. So yeah, it, it, it would be good to have them back, yes. But at the same time, I shouldn't be focusing on the injured players at the moment. I should be focusing on the players that we've got at the moment. Yeah, that are playing at the moment. And that is my problem at the moment with Tottenham at the moment. And that's why I'm saying it's a build season. So if that's that's answering the question in a full uh, way, and that's it. Back to you, Hirchi, I'm done. What what was the answer of it? So you're, I'm <laughs> really confused. Right here, it's <laughs> Van Der Ven and Madison nearly back. How important is this? Well, no, I'm saying, no, I'm, saying I'm, glad I'm, about it. I'm glad they're back. <laughs> I'm glad they're back. Obviously, it's not important. But, but, right, but... Why am I focusing on them when 
they are injured and they're still recovering. Still. Wait, it's not. Yeah? It's not about focusing on them. Obviously, we heard the news earlier in the week that they they are closing into being fully fit to play for the first team again. So it is news that we're talking about because those two players are two of our better players. That let's be fair, if they're fully fit and available, they're starting against the team that's next available. Right, that's where we're going with it. So. I get what you're saying is, is worrying about what we've got in front of us at the moment, but we can do, but both things aren't exclusive, right? We can do that with mutually. We can talk about both at the same time. We can talk about the team news because we're going to talk about Everton shortly because I know uh, Marlon's got a shoot shortly. So I want to get his take on um, Everton. So, um, but that that's the bit for me, right? Um, let's, let's sort of, sort of slowly move towards uh, Everton because we've got a game on the weekend which weirdly I'm going to. Yes, I am going to a game. That's crazy. I know. I haven't been... It feels like I'm, the last game I went to was Bournemouth last season where I walked out halfway through because it was one of the worst games of football I've ever witnessed. It was awful and went to the pub. Um, but look, Everton at home, is it a must win? Look, we got we got a good result again. Great result. Good result against Forest. Wasn't the greatest game. But Everton at the moment are on crazy, crazy good form at the moment. They're winning games. They've already overcome. They've already got their 10 points back from their since they got the deduction. Look, Marlon, I'll come to you because I know you do, you do have to shoot shortly, so I want to get your thoughts on it. How important is this Everton game? We've, just, we've got next weekend, obviously, Liverpool and Arsenal play each other at Anfield, I believe. Is that next weekend? I believe yeah. it's next weekend. Next weekend, yeah. So... so I think this game, Everton now is massive. We could be, we could theoretically, if hypothetically, close the gap at the front. I'm not saying we're winning the league. We're saying, I'm not saying all that. <laughs> but my point is, is for what I've always said is, is it's not about winning the league and all that. It's keeping as close to these guys at the top as long as we can, right? And clinging to the coattails as long as we can. Those who play each other, we have an opportunity. Look. We should be beating an Everton side. They're a good side at the moment. They're playing some good football. What do you think of it? Break it down for me, my friend. Look, um, is it a must-win game? Not really. I, yeah, it's not one of... Like, I thought the new the Newcastle game for me was the must-win. And I thought the Nottingham Forest was a must-win for different reasons because it was a way... we had, we done pretty well away this season um, when we look at the whole big picture. But this game is just now trying to get momentum. We've got players suspended again, as you said earlier. Um, for me, it's just a case of can we just keep it up? Um, we need to keep up the form. Um, if if we if we came out of it and we lost, I wouldn't be completely mad because it depends on what you're saying. It basically depends on what you're saying. Are we trying to stay as close to the title contenders? Or, I think, I think or, or are we trying to chase top four? Because, because the thing is, I think, I think yeah. that's the key bit. I think the key yeah. bit's there. It's can we cl cl cling on to it? Because I think, by the way, finishing in the Champions League this season is a massive, massive overachievement. I've always stand oh, by that. We finished yeah. in Champions League this season. I wasn't expecting that. I don't think at the start of the season anyone was expecting it. For, so yeah, yeah. But, for me, we've got to try and just keep keep up with Villa. That's 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 yeah, the yeah, yeah. team that's we fair. should be like. Aiming to keep close because they look for me, they will probably hit a bad patch at some point in the season, right? Yeah, right. They haven't had the, the, the like they started patchy, but they've been great. They've been they've been on a good run ever since, and they had that bad game against Forest, right? So it depends on where we're looking at where we're going to finish because we've gone through those five games where we didn't win, but look where we are. We're only a couple. What I think it's three points off seat. I can't remember what the points is. So for me, look. At we're, the end of the day, I think we're three points behind Man City. Man City, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, look, the game's in the comfy of fast. What we've got Everton, Brighton, and Bournemouth before that FA Cup tie, and then we've got a bit of a break, right? And like you said, for me, mm. two of the injuries are the key ones at the moment. Let's just try and get to February, right, as close to the European football as possible that we yep. can, and then assess it in February once the transfer windows close. We know who we've got. Hopefully, we've got our players back as well. We've got a full squad and assess it then. So, for right now, it's just trying to stay as close as possible to everyone in that top four um, over the next few weeks. If we win some, we win some. If we lose some, we lose some. For me, it's not as important as the Newcastle game was, but it is, it's, it's now just coming up. These are the games we've got to get through. I think we've got six yeah. games until Feb. Let's just get through them up until then. 
Yeah, no, 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 definitely. I think that's the key bit for me. It's all about just building and trying. If, if we can cling on to the, the guys ab above us, mm -hmm. as I said, just make sure, just gap. Yeah. Make sure the gap, because what you don't want, if you look at this, if you look at the Premier League table, this now becoming a gap from where Spurs are to where Newcastle, Brighton and them are. Then the gap is starting to fill and build them. You don't, you want to be closer to the guys in the top four or the top five, whatever it is, than the guys there, because then there is a taller order to then get back into the Champions League. Look, look, Will, uh, Mon, do you need to go now? Yeah, or? I need to go. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Just so, so you can go. Thanks, Mon. I'm an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming no on. Right? And guys, no, guys you. in the chat, go over to Southview Coys and make sure you subscribe to these guys doing amazing content. Yeah, not for me, for the other two, apparently, to Alex, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alex, no, no. Well, just, no can, I just give him, can I just give him his flowers so I can just look? Because I do like him. <laughs> I do like him. <laughs> We got to Marlon at South Ukoys and has and, yeah. and, and and Asmatic as well. Yeah, they do very good shows. They did a really good show with Will and um, a Chelsea fan that I was watching. Because if, if if I want to come on a show, I know it's a good show. You know what I mean? And I like the show. You know what I mean? This rival show that was really know. really good. When you by get the way. when you get this seal of approval from Alex, trust me. You know what I mean? So over. I'll um, give it to. Don't go over there now and do it. Stay here and carry on watching the show. Go over there <laughs> yeah. after the show and watch so it. So please subscribe um, yeah, and guys, like. No, if big up, Will. Big, big up, up, Alex. Big up, Fergie. No, thank Cheers, you. Thank, thank you, you very much, man. It's absolutely Cheers, a pleasure. Thank you. Um, and if someone, and if someone in the chat can, one of the mods can just whack um Southie Coyes' uh, link in the chat, will be amazing. Let's see if I can do this transition really quickly. Ready? Oh, look at that. See, look at that. Brilliant. Let's move on. Look, Will, look, I'll move I'll move over to you, my, uh, my friend. Um, is it a must win? Do do you agree with sort of the sort of idea what me and Marlon was sort of, sort of talking about in the sense of keeping as close to the guys like the Arsenal's, the Liverpool's, the Man City's, the Villas at the moment, keeping as close to those guys as long as possible um, and, and for however long? Because the further you get down to it, the closer you'll get to it, right? Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, just, you gotta put it out there. You gotta give it your best go. I mean, look, there's, there's no reason that even with Basuma and Udoji out, that we shouldn't be able to beat Everton. We just need to score more than them. I mean, it's yeah. simple as. So, can can we win against them? Do you think we beat them? Yeah, I mean, we've got more than enough firepower up front in order to beat them. Do you think the likes, the, the sort of, it will be the same front three if Brennan Johnson's back or not? Yeah, I mean, it should be. Brennan Johnson should be back, should play. So that means Kulzevsky should be back in midfield. Um, then it's just a matter of Hoybier filling in for Basuma. And I think you, yeah. just, you just go. You go as it is. Hoybier, Sarb, Kulzevsky. Um, yeah. Really don't, the only I think because I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna play a deep line on us, so I don't think um, we're gonna need somebody to break a press, right? Which is really what Basuma is good at is is breaking that press. I think Hoybier should be able to slot in, and maybe sometimes, to be honest with you, he's a little bit more creative from a static position than Basuma is as far as balls that break lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. No. Definitely, I get that. Um. Look, Alex, I'll come to you. Um, you're going to the game as well. well I believe I remember you mentioning you did mention to me you're going. Um, is it? A, I use the I use the terminology. Is it a must win? But I use I used it quite flippantly in this in the context of it because I think in context you can say most every game's a must win, right? Like you expect you want to try and win as many games as you can, right? But I, when I when I what I meant on it, it was is the further adrift you fall from the top four. And I, I listen. I've, you know my feelings on this. I don't think I've got no expectations. But when you're in the position, you you want to stay in the position, right? You don't want the likes of Brighton below you, Newcastle, who are just behind you at the moment, catching you up, and us losing ground to get potentially back in the Champions League. Um, what do you think about it, mate? Do you think we're going to get there, or is it one of those games that you go, well, look, they're in a lot more form than we are? I think there's a possibility that we can win because I think we I think Will is spot on what he says. We've got the we've got the firepower to do stuff, and mm -hmm. you know we will go and actually try and attack them. You know, um, if we're not doing that, 
you know, and won't be happy, and that's it. And again, like I said, I'm I'm a guy that does doesn't like Ange in, in that sense. You know what I mean? Because of certain reasons. But um, I think Everton are dangerous, though. I think Everton are dangerous um, because you know, if you don't score your chances, like you saw saw against West Ham, you you can get punished. You can get punished. So I don't look at the top four anymore. I don't look at the top four. I don't, I think, like I said, I've got no expectations this season. I don't think it's a case of, I think it's just keep with the pack, um, the pack for the title at the moment. Um, I think just keeping, just getting more more points and that's it for me. Um, I think the thing that's with Tottenham at the moment is that there's no expectations. And I think that's what's driving them through at the moment. I think, I, I think yeah. with the other teams like Brighton, they've had their, there, um, De Zerbi's had his season where he's had uh, a season of no expectations and he's he's um, exceeded expectations. Arsenal, they've had a season, they've had a couple of seasons with no expectations and they've exceeded their expectations. Now they've got expectations on them now and you see the, the pressure that, that they've got to deal with. You know what I mean? And that's going to be top season next season. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. This is why I say, and I've said on my channel, Mr. Box Office TV, if you don't, if you really want to know, you know, I'm nearly up to a thousand. You really want to know? That wasn't, know. that wasn't, that was like the BTEC version. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't your saying. Well, if you don't know, get if to you know. Really, really you really, really want to know. You know, like you know what I mean? Um, so, and this is why theory. I say, this is why I say, even though, because I say it's a bang average league and I still stick by it, it's a bang average league because it's not about Could great you players. Right at that point at the moment on that one, to be fair. Well, no it's, it's a bang average league the because the thing is, though, I think. We should be nowhere near the top. We are near the top. And that's why I said that Tottenham have got a chance of winning the league. We have. Because of those reasons. Because it's not about managers. It's about systems. And Angie's system is people are still getting to know it. And that's it. Yeah. And I think that's not just a thing in the Premier League now. It's a, it's a thing all, all over Europe. Because look at the team that's top of German League right now. Bayern Leverkusen. And who's manager by yeah. Leverkusen? Jabby Alonso. You know what I mean? Who plays a, yeah. a system that no one really knows about. Yeah? So you can win the league because if you have a good system, you've got a manager that's tactically astute who, let's be honest here, Ange's got a system that can do that, right? And, you know, the players are all together, which they are all together, you have got a chance and no expectations as well. So, you know, in some way, there is a chance there. I would say that, yes. Well, there's always but, a chance, isn't there? But, but I think but it's really... I, I would say it's on the caveat because it's a. I don't think it's a great league. That's, that's what I say as well, right? I think it's just about the managers. But to answer the question on Everton, I think it's going to be a very difficult game. I think it's, I think it's a 50-50, if I'm really honest with you. Um, I think Tottenham have to take their chances. If they don't take their chances, you see what's happened against Liverpool with Man United. Liverpool didn't make great chances, didn't take their chances. Man United didn't, uh, could have uh, won the game and, t- and uh, snatched uh, 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 the, all three points. It's kind of like that at the moment. I think it's 50-50. And that's yeah. It for me. No, I think I think so. I think you, I, I have you probably right at that point. I think, listen, can we beat him? Yeah. Um, but it's all about, it is realistically all about what we can do um, down the road, right? Like, it's about moving forward because I want to sort of move on to a, one last, one real last topic. I think we're going to go for another 20 so minutes. So hopefully might be this last one. Um, I want to talk about transfer market. I know, Will, we had this conversation on Thursday. So it's probably double jeopardy in the sense of we kind of have this sort of convo about the transfer window and what we're looking at, what we need, and the sort of pitch on because because we're going into Christmas. Christmas is next week, um, so obviously everyone in the chat, Merry Christmas to you guys um, next week. Enjoy it. Um, so I don't know if we're going to be doing a Spurs review. Got my Christmas, Christmas jumper on. Have you actually? Got your, I've actually got that Christmas jumper, that exact one. But it's, it's we should wear it. Next, we should wear it together next UK. time, Thursday. I will. Be, I will be wearing it probably next week when I get back. So yes, I have got. Um, I have got that exact one um, from the club shop. That feels was like what, three years ago or something. Like yeah, very long ago. time ago. It feels like. Um, but 
What I wanted to sort of, because I don't think they might, I'm not 100% sure if we can do one on Christmas Eve, Spurs review on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, which is the next two, next two Sundays, because I'll probably be out most both of those nights. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing them, but I'll we'll decide it nearer down the line and I'll let you guys know. But because obviously we're going to then break into January. And what I want to talk about at the moment is what do we need? Like, Obviously, me and Will spoke about this on Thursday night anyway. So, Alex, I'll, I'll go to you first for it. What do we need at Tottenham? And where can you realistically see Spurs improving? And is it going to be same old Tottenham? Or is it going to be um, a new approach from Tottenham? What do you think and what do you see happening? We need, we need uh, in my eyes, I think we need a central defender and a winger. Or so, someone that winger, can play, so a winger play, and a central defender. Yeah, someone exactly. that can play um, along the, the front line that will be able to get past a, a man and has got pace, as far as I'm concerned. So I, I would I would take one of those at the moment. Um, I think we'll get the two of them. Um, whether it will be to what people want, I don't know. I think it's going to be an unexpected one. I don't know what sort of players we'll be getting. I think we'll get similar players to the players that we've been linked with, but it won't be those players. I think we'll, what we'll do is is that we'll do a data-led um, approach on it and then we'll look at players outside of Europe or in Europe or and then bring so, one in, possibly. that uh, to, the, Those two in, I think. And um, I think with the, uh, the backroom staff we've got at the moment, I think that's what they'll do. Um, with obviously Ange um, saying yes or no to whether they are what he wants and that's it. So, look, look I get what you said. I understand what you said. But here's the question I'll ask you here because we, me and Will have this, we had this debate with um, Haz and Stell on Thursday. Spurs at the moment have already um, utilised all their registration slots. Now, what? So, in in context, the only way Spurs realistically can buy is if they buy under twenty ones, or they remove people off the registration to buy people in. Now, that in in context, it could be we just remove them off the registrations, or we release players, or we sell players. Which players would you expect? Because you said I think you mentioned two, right? A winger and a centre half, right? Mm. So realistically, you're looking at two. Which two players would it be that have to go for that to happen, right? Dyer. Dyer and Gill. Really? Not even Hugo Lloris? Well, yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, Hugo Lloris, yes, that stays for itself as well, obviously. Mm. Um, but I, I, think, I think at the moment, um, if we're looking at a position at the moment, I think that, yeah, you could add him to that as well, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those are the ones that stand out mostly. I would say, in my mind, um, that need to go. Um, so you you would put you would put Brian Hill in. So the reason why I wanted to go down this is my my theory, and it is literally theory is Perisic would be on that list as well to go because he's out for the season, right? So why would you have him registered if he's out for the season? Yeah. Oh, no. 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 Yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah. Mm. If he's registered, yeah, you take him out as well. So, so because easy, my, like, my theory is, is realistically we've got three players to buy unless we sell anyone else. Is it yeah. three out, three in? Um, and I, and I and that's my theory on it. And if we only get two, then one of those others will stay registered. But so that that's my ide, ideology theory, whatever you want to call it. Like you, you, I, say, I think the, the theory is at the moment Dyer's not going to be good for the system anymore. He's not going to play, so there's no point. Um, I think that's made it clear as well. Gill, not good enough in my eyes. Um, if I if I had the choice to get rid of the Celso as well, um, Cessignon. yeah, um, even yeah, paid for us, Cessignon, by the way, probably Sessignon as well. Um, but I think that's just too many players. I think at the moment, I don't know whether you can get as many players in in January, so I think you're gonna have to keep some of them. Um, but I think out of the two, I'm <coughs> sorry. I think you got to get rid of Gill, um, which you can get. I think you can get a loan for him to get out of here. Um, Dyer, I think you just need to release him. I'm sorry. Um, 
And Lloris, I think he just needs he needs he needs a lot he needs to go and play some football, doesn't he? So, you know, and Perisic, he, he, you might as well not register him. He, he can still play as a he could still be around the training ground. You can do that still. You know what I mean? Even yeah, he would still. Yeah, him. if they're still if they're still uh, if they're still employed by the club, they still have to turn up for training whether they're registered or not. But I wouldn't rush him back because you know you can't rush. Uh, He's an no, injury like that he got. You can't rush a player like that back, right? No, because he's getting older now. So I think, yeah, I think there are plenty of well, opportunities there. Fortunately, age doesn't have anything to do with ACLs because, believe it mm. or not, they don't, like, you can't, it's not like it heals on its own. They literally have to replace it with yeah, an yeah. artificial one. So it's really just your recovering time from surgery. In fact, modern ACL surgeries, you're, you're, you're almost walking without crutches within about a week after your surgery. It's mm. simply about rebuilding muscles and, and doing scans to make sure that the, the new ACL has grafted correctly, right? Like it's like, I don't know if anybody's ever gotten like an implant in a tooth, right? And you have to get a bone graft and you have to get, the, yeah. they pack the socket with all that stuff. It's not the skin around that heals very quickly. It's simply the bone having to regenerate and doing all of these different things. And that's what they have to do with an ACL. They have to drill a hole literally through your bone and then pull in a new ACL and attach it. Right. So you're waiting for that bone to heal and strengthen and densify. That's what you're waiting for. Mm. It's really not, it's really not about like you're waiting for that tendon to heal because they just replaced the whole dang thing. Well, yeah. No, 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 definitely. Um, yeah, guys, guys. Before before I go on to Will here, guys, come on. We've got, we've not even got a hundred likes. Let's get over a hundred likes now. Smash up the like button. Let's get to a hundred, hundred and fifty. Come on, let's get that done now. That'll be amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, Will, I know we had this conversation on Thursday, but I'm going to go back to you again anyway. Um, look, I think we are in need of recruitment. I think that's blatantly obvious from everyone else there, and. We had the discussion Thursday, and I think I I've been very adamant that we need a center half is more than I think it's the most crucial position we need to. I think you're more was if I'm right in saying you were more looking for an attacker, right? Yeah, for me, it's an attacker that I that I think we need. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I th for it's just the, um, for me that those are the particular positions that I think that really we need to focus on because we're not we're not really struggling defensively as much as we are struggling in, in scoring goals and finding and being able to create and or finish goals from different positions in that front three uh, for i think for the last four to five weeks we've been we've been really been playing with only one decent person in the front line that's that's son so um, yeah i i would i would say when when brennan johnson plays out on the right i think he is He's been a lot, lot better. But I do get your point. I think for me, down the middle, we need a goal scorer. Like I know like Richardson scored three and two, but I sit there and go, the chances we create, I think if you can, if we, look, I, I know it's not relatively simple to go out there and just buy people in January. Teams don't necessarily want to lose their assets and then have a short amount of time to replace them. But let's be fair with it. Yeah. it's not like we can't go out there and be a bit brave ignore the, the man at the top for a second but there's no reason why we can't go out there and be brave and get the likes of Santiago Jimenez and Feyenoord can't chest the waters and go do you know what we'll put we'll, we'll put in a, a bid that they can't ref, they re, can't not accept right uh, I, I, I'm just using him as an example right? I mean there's other strikers out there but it can't be as simple as, oh, well, it's January. We can't just get it. Is that just a cop-out? No, it's, it's, it's not a cop-out. It's, but it's, it shouldn't, shouldn't affect us. We should be able to get things done. It needs to be happened done fast. Right? Pasacago has even come out in press conferences and said that uh, uh, he, you know, he wrote his letter to Santa Claus and, and, and hopefully he's, he's been on the good list. So it's just now down to the club, you know. They gotta get it yeah, done. no, I, I agree. It is, is exactly it is down to the club and what they decide to do. Um, what I don't want is I don't want stopgap players at the moment. I think I think I want to get past this era of oh well, we're just getting them in short term. No, I want 
I think I would I'm actually at that point where I'd rather Ben Davis at centre half than we just get in a temporary stocking filler if you want to go down the Christmas theme that just helps us for six months. Is it worth it? Is is it if if we if we if, look we get to the end of the window and we sign a centre half on loan, a winger on loan, and a relatively cheap attacker that is. You sit there and go, well, he's no, he's not amazingly better than Richarlison. Um, that's when I'll get a little bit disappointed because I'll sit there and go, well, hang on a minute. Is it are we actually improving the squad? I think I think what I'm trying to get at here is, and Alex, I'll come to you on it. If we're buying players now, it has to be to improving the eleven so that the squad is bolstered and it's better, right? I think the thing, the thing, the key thing is at the moment is that we need to stop this whole thing about the players have to compete to, to be in the in the starting lineup. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when they get the shirt, I don't want to hear, oh, when this player comes back, he's going to just come straight back into the team. That shouldn't work like that in top teams. That yeah, no, I like agree that. with you so, on that. So this is the thing. I think you know because I remember a time when um, uh, under Harry Redknapp we had a, a guy called Crunchyar. And um, yeah, Nico, Nico yeah, Crunchy, yeah. and he was he was Harry Redknapp's guy. He was Harry Redknapp's guy all day long. And then Gareth Bell came to the fall, and look what happened. Displaced him, yeah. Couldn't get back into the team. Ended up having to send him because Bell completely went flying to big heights, didn't he? So you know, yeah, yeah. I just think at the moment, I think it, just at the moment, I think. We need players that, and I'm not looking for world class players here. I'm just saying that we need players that are competent in what Ange wants to do. And this is why we brought in the system of the data led approach. And that's it. So um, there'll be players there that you'll sit there and say, who, who? Who are they? But the thing is, I think we're doing it the way that Brighton are doing it. And you're, you're saying, sitting there thinking, when Brighton get players in, you're saying, ooh, but then they surprise you, don't they? So I think, you know, I'm not, like I said, I've, I've got no expectations this season, like I said before. I think the only thing I think is more important at the moment that we have players enough at the moment to um, to cope with suspensions and injuries, because that's going to happen. That's not going to, yeah. that's not going to change um, under Ange, because unfortunately, you're going to have to be aggressive and we're going to get injuries. So, you know what I mean? This is why I, I'm 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 pretty relaxed. You know what I mean? So about the situation, but we do need players, and I do agree with what Ange says. Again, I'm agreeing with Ange when I don't even like the guy. Um, you know that. You know. Oh well, yeah. Well, you know. But you know, you know what people have said about me when when I've said this. Um, you know. <laughs> That you know, he he needs his, he needs players that are going to play his system. He need he needs players that will be able to play his system. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what we're going to have to get. You know what I mean? But what I don't think is right is that he he gets a big part player. You know, a stopgap. I don't I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I, I just I don't agree with that at all. I think that's just going to wind up the situation. You know what I mean? And that will show that we haven't got really a plan. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think we need to stop that, and that's it. You know, that, that that's that that's what I want to not stop and I think he needs to get players in early as well you know and I don't see why we can't get that as well because if you yeah, yeah. you know these these people like Johan Lang um the guy his assistant with him Rob McKenzie. they were there in early from November so they must know players already you know that that's just my feeling that's it no look, look Alex I think you, I think you I have you right to a certain extent again as always um but I think for now, at the moment, I think when we're signing players, as I said, I think because of my expectation this season wasn't, I haven't got any. That's why I kind of want to see that we're build, we're buying players, not just to solve a problem for five minutes. The idea is, is that we're solving, we're signing players long term, and building in a sense that the players that we're bringing in in January aren't there to go well. We can't get this player, so we're going to get this one for a short term. Um, but, but then we're going to try and get this player in January, in summer, and all this lot. I think for me at the moment, it's about it is all about what we do for season two, season three. Um, the will, 
look, I'll, I'll, I'll finish it off with you quickly because we're going to go for another five more minutes. But, like, do you do you have me right or am I wrong? Or, like, if if we come in and sign a... I'll, I'll use his name. I know we're not going to sign him because he's at Everton, but if we sign a long lay style signing, are we all going to be sitting there going, here we go again? Oh, you're muted, mate. Oh, sorry. Hello? Um, hey, you back. Yeah. No, I mean, long lay... I don't think we'll do a long lay type of a, of a signing again. Um, I, 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 I think we'll do... I think we'll probably do more of like a, you know, Van der Van S type of a signing. You know, somebody okay. that, that fits the numbers, but we've never really heard of, that we're maybe skeptical about. You know, similar things like that. And uh, I don't care really who it is, as long as they don't, as long as they're not Brian Hill or Eric Dyer, and and they come in as, as soon as possible. Right, the fact the sooner they get in, the fa- the 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 more impact it has for us. So, yeah, no, 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 def- no, definitely. I think that's because we're going to need someone to cover. We're going to need someone who can actually put balls into the box or, or can actually put do cutbacks from the byline when Sun leaves. Without that. We're already pitching. Yeah. No, I, again, again, I have you right. Um, I have you right in a sense. Like, but look, guys, uh, we're going to wrap up in a second anyway. Um, I just want to ask you guys, last, last one, smash up the likes, guys. It's Christmas. Give us a little Christmas present. And that's just a little click on the button. Um, uh, and then I'm going to be redirecting you over to Sean and Henry and all the Irish Hotspur and all those lot over there. So stick around. Make sure you hit FHTV Raid when we go over there. But, um, yeah, I'll finalise this. I'll get your score predictions, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Alex, I'll come to you first. Everton on the weekend, hit me with a score prediction and why. And give me some goal scorers. Why not? 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Who's scoring? Um, oh, I've got no idea, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not good with goal scorers, I think. Um Who's that winger for Everton that's been scoring a lot? Actually, the White McNeil. McNeil, yeah, maybe he might score. Um, you know, who should we who we need to get from them as their left back? Um, left back? Michelenko. Yeah, oh, I don't blame uh, you for saying that. Uh, actually, yeah, it's I like really the uh, I like Ranthwaite though as well. I like him. Good, good backup for Adoji. I can see why you're saying that. To be honest. Uh, probably Who's scoring for us, Son. Maybe who? Who? I'll be honest. He has he has played okay. He's been good uh, on the wing as well. To be fair, um, still needs to do more in my eyes. Um, but yeah, that's just because I, you know, um, so you're going Son Son McNeil to score. Yeah, in a one-one. Yeah, one-one. Because yeah, one, one. I think I think um, Everton will. I think we'll miss chances, unfortunately. I, I just I don't trust with Charleston as well, to be honest. Um, and if you got Kulu on that on that right, Everton will know what to do with him. Sorry, I don't I think Kulu exactly will be playing on the right. He might play down the middle. I, I hopefully he'll be playing in the middle. Hopefully he'll be playing in the middle because I think that will be give us more of a chance to win the game. I think. I think it'll be more effective. I mean, the only changes that are going to be made is it's going to be Emerson Royal playing on left wing or left full, fullback Le- left and yeah. Hoy Bear playing. Um, well, will he put the Celso into midfield if he comes back? Good. I mean, it's just if he's ready or not. I think he'll save him more for like a substitute for either, you know, that way he can maybe sub Vernon Johnson off and then move Cool out wide again. And then bring on the cell so that, you know that type of a of a deal is probably what you'll end up seeing. Mm. Yeah. Well, what's your prediction then? Uh, my prediction, you know, for all the Arsenal fans in here that that promote, they, they say we're going to lose every week, and we don't, and then they give me crap <laughs> when I get when I get a scoreline prediction wrong, um, so they can write this down. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say three one ton. Oh, I like it. Who's scoring? His son's gonna get one. Um, Kulusevski's gonna get one, and Richarlison to get one. 
Everton's goal scorer as well. Uh, what's that midfielder that's in there behind uh, Dominic Cavalier? Oh, Mama. Uh -huh. oh, Mama. No, it starts and with Donna. a D, like Decore. Oh, Decore. Yeah. Decore. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. I like he's Decore. He's starting to um, I'm going to go 2 1 Tottenham. Um, Son, and I'm going to go Brennan Johnson will score. And I'm also going to say Decore is going to score for them. He seems to be picking up a few goals. Um, thank you very much, guys. I had a really good time on this one. It's a good show. Um, guys in the chat, make sure you go over to Tottenham away and subscribe. Let's get them up. And of course, Alex, how far are you from 1K? Or have you passed the 1K yet? Uh, 79. 79 or 79, something like that. Look, guys, yeah, I've, got, so, I've got about four, four, was it 940, I think, at the moment. 940. Yeah, that's about 60 or so. Guys, everyone in the chat, someone put Alex's link in there. Go over and subscribe to Alex. Let's get him close to 1K. Give him a Christmas gift. He's so close. Let's let's make a rule. Let's get Alex to one K before Christmas Day. There you go. Let's make that as a rule. Make sure you go and support him. Let's get him to one K. Um, and on that note, guys, thank you so much. And um, all getting redirected um, over to uh, Sean at Spurs Talk Show. So guys, go over there. Put hashtag FHTV Raid or hashtag Perchy sent me. Do whatever you want. Um, as I said, I'm not 100 sure if we're going to have a um, Spurs review next Sunday because it's Christmas Eve. But if, if we don't, I uh, also say Merry Christmas to you all. Have a really good time. You'll see me in between that. There'll be stuff, loads of content going on this in the coming week. But if I don't see you and you only come here to watch this, so Merry Christmas to you guys. And enjoy it. Christmas wise, spend time with your family and have a good time. And there's a lot of football on. Guys, peace out. See you later. Um, if it would let me. Bye, guys. <laughs>